wanted to do is just very quickly yeah. go through what the IEEE is, and then I'll turn the talk over to Steve. Uh, I'm terrible at standing in front of a microphone. We're one of the world's largest professional engineering groups. Uh, we are trying to advance innovation and in technology and excellence for the betterment of humanity. Uh, we're a global engineering society. Uh, one of the key things that we offer that I think is a value to engineers is we do a lot of networking. Um, we support communications of concepts and the technical advances, letting people talk about what they're doing and share the knowledge so we can move it forward. Um, we try to provide ways of keeping our members current in new technologies. Uh, we do provide continuing education for members. Uh, we have about 340,000 members in over 160 countries. 45% of our membership is outside of the U.S. We have 38 technical societies. These societies have sections that are distributed throughout the world. Uh, we have about 80,000 students uh, with about 1,800 student branches. Uh, we are very active in creation of standards, which probably many of you have seen. Uh, we publish 144 journals. We have 2 million documents in a digital library that we provide. Um, we sponsor 900 conferences annually. Uh, have a lot of online education and access to books, as well as uh, we do get involved in some certifications. Uh, the Computer Society is one of those 38 societies. And what we do is we want to advance the theory and applications of computer and information processing technology. And the net of it is, we're kind of neat in that we cross both the software and the hardware. We can kind of work with all of these different things. Um, we do the same thing that IEEE does. We try to provide networking, education, and keep people current. We have about 78,000 members worldwide. Um, we have a large population of computer professionals here in Seattle. We have about 4,000 IEEE members in Seattle. About 1,000 of them are in the computer society. Uh, this year we've done three talks. Uh, we have multiple student chapters. And some people ask what you do in the student chapters. Uh, one of the things we did this year is we helped facilitate the extreme programming contest. We had nine teams from the four schools in the area. And a couple of them did amazingly well. We're getting involved in this for the first time. Um, for the next year, we're planning on doing four talks. Uh, one of the speakers we've talked to is a gentleman by the name of Louis von Ott. Louis is in Gaming with a pur Purpose. And I've heard him talk, and he's a rather interesting speaker. If we can get him here in town, I think you'll enjoy him. Uh, we have a student paper contest coming up in the spring of this year, so if we have students here who are interested in competing, we'd love to have you get involved. Uh, we are trying something new this year. Uh, engineers like hands-on things. What we're going to try to do is create some workshops where we can maybe do some education type activities and try to give engineers a chance to get some of that experience learning from other engineers. Um, if you want additional information, you can get it at the uh, IEEEseattle.org <coughs> website. Um, anybody that would like to get involved, we'd love to have attendees at our presentations, as well as contributors and volunteers. Uh, we also, <coughs> one of the things we want to do is try to provide value to the engineers in the Seattle area. It's really hard sometimes coming up with topics. If you have topics that you'd like to suggest that would be of value to the engineers in the area, please pass it on to us. We're looking for things that will help people, we'll read these speakers, that will provide value. And if you have any questions,
mic. Well, um, it's very nice to be here to talk about secrets of world-class software organizations. Uh, this is a, a little bit of a different topic for me in that it's not a particularly uh, technical topic, I don't think. Uh, there are some technical aspects, but uh, maybe not as much as uh, you might have thought, I, w I would think, uh, when you uh, walked into the room tonight. Uh, I think that depending on who you talk to, you might get some pretty different views of what would qualify as a world-class organization. If you were to talk to, uh, well, if you were to talk to uh, Capers Jones, for example, uh, Capers Jones uh, might say, "Well, gee, I think a world-class software organization is one that is uh, accurately estimating its software projects and is tracking its defects carefully and is achieving." Uh, low defect rates with uh, high degree of statistical process control and so on. And that certainly would be one view of what constitutes world class. Uh, if you were to talk to Watts Humphrey, uh, Watts Humphrey might say, well, I think a world class software organization is one where we've got teams that are using PSP and TSP within a CMM framework and uh, operating at CMM level 5. And uh, that would give you another view of what qualifies as world class. Uh, if you were to talk, uh, to talk to the signers of the Agile Manifesto, uh, you might find uh, people that say, well, we think world-class software organizations are organizations that are putting uh, people ahead of process and customer collaboration ahead of uh, documentation and contract negotiation and so on, and that uh, teams that are using extreme programming or Scrum or other uh, agile processes. My view is actually a little different. Uh, my view of what qualifies as a world-class software organization, uh, it's showing up it is, okay. Uh, is, uh, is really driven by uh, a number of questions. One is, can you have a world-class software organization inside a mediocre business? And uh, I don't just mean that rhetorically. I mean that as a real question for you to think about. Uh, and, uh, and I think that's actually a pretty tough question. If you show me a mediocre business and say that there's a world-class software organization inside that business, I'm going to challenge that and say, well, how is it even possible to claim that the software organization is really world-class if uh, its level of support for a business is only sufficient to support a business being mediocre? Uh, 